Whilst WWE does its best to promote anti-bullying messages through its community outreach programs, there has been an unavoidable track record of bullying culture in the company throughout its history. From the untouchable power-mad politicians, to the locker room police looking to whip everybody into shape, and just some downright bastards too, there are myriad stories of WWE stars dishing out rough treatment for any perceived infraction, no matter how minor. Though some WWE talents came out of the other side side of such tribulations, others unfortunately succumbed to the taunts of WWE's most terrible tyrants and made their way toward the exit door. I'm Adam Pacisi from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are 10 WWE stars who were bullied out of the company. Be a star! Number 10. Jim Ross The most celebrated and beloved commentator of all time, it's no secret that WWE would often go out of their way to torment and humiliate JR on screen time and time again. From the infamous arse surgery angle to multiple instances of attacking JR's character for seemingly no reason, squirting his face with barbecue sauce, and legitimately leaving him in the dark about being switched from Raw to SmackDown, WWE hardly made good old JR's life easy. In fact, in fact, WWE fired Ross on several separate occasions throughout his long tenure with the company, with his final dismissal from the promotion coming after Ross failed to control an intoxicated Ric Flair during a promotional appearance in 2014. Many believe that WWE threw Ross under the bus and were looking for any excuse to get rid of the veteran announcer. Whilst Ross is a noted curmudgeon and probably wasn't always the easiest to work with, it was obvious that someone in management had it in for the man in the black hat. In fact, it has been suggested that his southern accent, age, and even his enduring popularity were all factors in WWE wanting him gone from the company and pushing him as hard as possible towards breaking points. Number 9. The Jackal Don Callis is a master at getting heat, as seen during his runs in ECW and AEW, but whilst his work in WWE as the Jackal may have won its fair share of plaudits with fans and critics, many in the company weren't too enamoured with Callis himself. First debuting as part of the Truth Commission, in late 1997, Jackal would go on to become a cult-like preacher on WWE TV, forming the oddities and the acolytes in his image. However, it's said that Callis's standoffish nature alienated him from members of the locker room, with Bradshaw referring to him only as Monkey Boy and getting the Hardys to break toothpicks in Don's car door locks to stop him from getting changed in his vehicle, Matt and Jeff themselves getting out of Bradshaw's bad books if they followed through with his request. Callis would be released in late 1997 with Bruce Pritchard saying his elitist nature and the perception that Callis got over at the expense of his managed talent sealing his fate. Whilst the notion of Callis getting himself over may have been cause for concern within WWE, this one seems like a clash of personalities and a fight that Callis could never win. Number 8. Rene Dupree One of the youngest champions in WWE history, Rene Dupree clearly had the world at his feet, with a teenage prodigy joining WWE's main roster in 2003 at just 18 years old. Whilst numerous stories have emerged about Dupree's ego and cockiness, so too have the stories alleging homophobic and racist bullying at the hands of some WWE stars, reportedly upon the orders of The Undertaker. No surprise that Bradshaw is alleged to have been instigator-in-chief, throwing homophobic slurs at Dupree every single day, whilst Bob Holly would legitimately beat Rene up during a house show due to an incident concerning a speeding ticket of all things. Rene would be his own worst enemy at times, Times, and though his supposed pomposity could have been chalked up to youthful arrogance, there was no reason for the locker room to treat him the way they did. Things didn't improve all that much, and after spinning his wheels on the lower end of the card, an unmotivated Rene was sent to ECW and then on to FCW for one more match before exiting the company. Having endured a more than unpleasant stay in WWE, Dupree was relieved to receive his release in July of 2007. Number 7. Daniel Puder Tough enough contestant Daniel Puder found himself in hot water after legitimately trying to snap Kurt Angle's arm with a Kimura lock on an episode of SmackDown in November of 2004, and whilst debate rages as to whether Puder was in the right or the wrong, it was an unscripted amateur shoot against Angle after all, WWE firmly decided this young upstart needed a lesson in how things are done. Fast forward to Royal Rumble 2005, and Puder found himself all alone in the ring with Bob Holly, Chris Benoit, and Eddie Guerrero, and to say the 
three battle-hardened veterans put a beating on him is an understatement. They mercilessly pummeled the MMA fighter, who had to just stand there and accept it before tossing him over the top rope and into obscurity. Pewter didn't last long in WWE after the Rumble, being sent to OVW days after the event itself and then getting unceremoniously released several months later. Again, like Dupree, some have spoken of Pewter's arrogance, but how much of this is true and how much of it is WWE twisting reality to justify a sanctioned three-on-one beating is up for debate. Number 6. Chad Wicks The Dicks, that's Chad and James Dick, had a rough go of it from the off on WWE's main roster, what with their gimmick being the Dicks and all. Things weren't much better for the newcomers behind the scenes, with the diminutive tag team finding themselves the subject of routine ribbing. James took it on the chin and laughed it off, but Chad did the exact opposite, leading to issues between the pair of them. These issues came to the boil during a tour of Mexico, where the SmackDown goon squad made it their mission to make Chad's life a living hell. They hauled him into wrestler's court, got him drunk, and instigated a fight between him and James, which Chad lost. After that rather unpleasant evening, Chad, who at one point locked JBL, Benoit, Undertaker, and others in a bathroom just to get some respite, allegedly woke up the next day beaten up, stripped naked, and unable to remember what had happened the night before. Ordered off the tour bus by JBL, Wix then had to take a taxi by himself back to the airport. The dicks were both released a month later. Number 5. Justin Roberts It's not just in-ring performers who get taunted by their peers, with rig announcer Justin Roberts at the mercy of the bigger boys for much of his WWE tenure. The Dapper Yapper stayed with WWE for 12 years, rising through the ranks to become lead ring announcer, but he was a frequent target for abuse from the likes of JBL and Chris Benoit. Although Benoit went out of his way to make Justin's WWE life tough from time to time, he also did check in to see how he was when his dad contracted cancer. Bradshaw, however, was a different story. In his autobiography, Roberts alleges that Bradshaw and his crew were merciless in their harassment, hounding Roberts non-stop on tour buses, throwing his bags down streets, and even allegedly telling Roberts to end his own life every day. On one occasion, they stole and hid his passport while on an international tour. Eventually, enough was enough. Burnt out and disrespected for over a decade, Roberts was praying for his release and got it in October 2013, later calling his exit from WWE a blessing. Roberts now serves as lead ring announcer for All Elite Wrestling, a role he's held since the promotion's inception. Number 4. Palmer Cannon You may not remember Palmer Cannon, the SmackDown authority figure who represented the network and wanted to make things more PC, that's politically correct, but also Palmer Cannon, get it, as he had a short and relatively uneventful run during the Ruthless Aggression era. Making his way to SmackDown in late 2005, Cannon would last less than a year, walking out of the company and flying himself back to the States after just one day of WWE's post-WrestleMania tour of Europe in April 2006 and demanding his release. So why the dramatic exit? Well, according to Cannon himself, none other than John Dick Ed Layfield and Chris Benoit routinely harassed him during his brief time in the company, with the two reportedly pranking Cannon by duct-taping him to a wall and threatening to assault him. Cannon said, screw this, and took off. And can anyone really blame him? I guess you can understand the need for the locker room to police itself and remove any major egos in order to have everybody working on the same page, but there is a world of difference between that and bullying, and someone should have put these tyrants in their place far sooner rather than just laughing their abuse off as hazing or ribbing. Number 3. Amy Webber A member of JBL's villainous cabinet stable, Amy Webber was only in WWE for a scant few months, exiting the company seemingly as quickly as she debuted. Amy asked for her release in February of 2005, revealing years later that her exit was due to bullying and harassment. Surprisingly, JBL was not the culprit this time. Webber has gone on to praise JBL's conduct around her during her run. But it was in fact Randy Orton and Ed whose cruel taunts led Webber to say adios following a tour of the Far East. Orton allegedly slammed into Webber on a flight and chastised her, while Edge poured a full drink on her face as she slept, apparently as a lesson to Webber for committing the crime of getting some painkillers from the men's locker room on the advice of medical staff. When said flight landed, Webber decided she was done with the company and the pro wrestling business entirely. This is not the first reported incident of Orton acting unprofessionally during his early years in the company, with Randy
Kelly alleged to have dumped an entire bottle of tanning lotion onto Rochelle Lowen's bag in 2004 after she rebutted his advances. Number 2. Sable During the Attitude Era, Sable became one of the biggest stars in the entire wrestling industry, with the 38 special winning legions of fans due to her flesh-bearing antics. Hey, it was the 90s, we were young and horny, alright? However, many accounts suggest that fame and popularity got to Sable's head, with Rena Mero proving deeply unpopular in the locker room. So unpopular was Sable that she became the target of abuse, harassment, and bullying within WWE. Amongst the taunts thrown Sable's way, X-Pac is alleged to have defecated in her bag, something he is said to have also done to Sonny and Mark Henry, with Sable abruptly departing the company in June of 1999 and filing a $110 million lawsuit against the promotion. As part of the suit, Sable would claim an unsafe working environment was present in WWE, never mind the juvenile jocular culture and sexual harassment from locker room to boardroom. The two sides would settle out of court and improbably mended their their relationship a few years later, with Sable returning to WWE in 2003 before departing on good terms a year later. I mean, nobody's really gonna bully you when Brock Lesnar is your boyfriend, are they? Number 1. Vader One of the most fearsome competitors in professional wrestling history, Vader was a multi-time champion across America and Japan, known for a punishing style that took down even the very toughest of opponents. However, when he arrived in WWE, his reputation preceded him, and it wasn't long until an aging and broken down Mastodon found himself on the wrong side of some of the most influential names in the locker room, The Click. Vader challenged world champion Shawn Michaels at SummerSlam 96, but when he messed up a spot, he was physically kicked by Michaels and berated in the ring. Backstage, Michaels allegedly threw his weight around and threatened to have Vader fired, prompting the big man to break down in tears. From then on, Vader would still be prominently featured by WWE, but commentary didn't shy away from making comments about Vader's hygiene and weight, with the legend written off TV at No Way Out 98 after being instructed to tell the world he was a big fat piece of sugar. Jake Roberts would seemingly have little sympathy for the big man, claiming Vader was a bully himself everywhere but WWE. Still, bridges were mended when Vader was posthumously inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2022.